What inspired you to become a full stack developer? I was drawn to the idea of building end-to-end -end applications that are both functional and visually appealing. I enjoy the challenge of working with both the front-end and back-end components of a system. What programming languages and technologies are you proficient in? I am proficient in several programming languages, including JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. I have experience with several front-end frameworks, including React and Angular, as well as back-end frameworks like Node.js and Ruby on Rails. Can you explain the difference between server-side rendering and client-side rendering? Server-side rendering involves rendering HTML on the server and sending it to the client as a fully formed web page. Client-side rendering, on the other hand, involves rendering HTML and JavaScript on the client-side browser. How do you keep up with the latest web development trends and technologies? I attend industry conferences, follow influential developers and bloggers on social media, and read industry publications and blogs to stay up to date on the latest web development trends and technologies. How do you optimize website performance and speed? I optimize website performance by minimizing HTTP requests, compressing files, optimizing images, and reducing the size of files. Additionally, I utilize caching and minification techniques to improve website speed. Can you walk us through your development process from start to finish? My development process typically begins with requirements gathering and design. From there, I move on to development, testing, and deployment. Throughout the process, I collaborate with stakeholders to ensure that the final product meets their needs and requirements. Have you worked with any front-end frameworks like React or Angular? What do you think are the benefits of using them? Yes, I have experience working with both React and Angular. The main benefits of using these frameworks are that they provide structure and organization to code, promote code reuse, and enhance the overall user experience by providing a responsive and dynamic interface. Can you explain the concept of responsive web design? Responsive web design is a technique used to design web pages that automatically adjust to different screen sizes and resolutions, providing an optimal viewing experience on any device. How do you handle cross-browser compatibility issues? I use CSS prefixes and polyfills to ensure that my code works correctly on different web browsers. I also test my code on multiple browsers to identify and fix any compatibility issues. How do you implement authentication and authorization in your applications? I use a combination of password-based and token-based authentication methods, along with role-based access control to ensure that users can access only the resources they are authorized to access. Have you worked with any backend technologies like Node.js or Ruby on Rails? Yes, I have worked with both Node.js and Ruby on Rails to build scalable and efficient web applications. Can you explain the difference between SQL and NoSQL databases? SQL databases store data in structured tables with predefined schemas while NoSQL databases store data in a more flexible and scalable manner, usually in document or key-value stores. How do you manage version control in your projects? I use GIT for version control, creating branches for different features and merging them back into the main branch after testing and review. I also use commit messages to provide clear documentation of changes. 
Have you implemented any automated testing frameworks in your projects? Yes. I have used testing frameworks like Jest and Mocha to automate testing in my projects, ensuring that my code works correctly and is maintainable over time. Can you explain the concept of RESTful APIs? RESTful APIs are a type of web service that use HTTP requests to perform CRUD, create, read, update, delete operations on resources using standard HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. How do you handle security concerns like SQL injection or cross-site scripting? One approach is to use prepared statements when querying databases to prevent SQL injection attacks. Another approach is to sanitize user input to prevent cross-site scripting attacks. Have you worked with any cloud-based services like AWS or Azure? Yes, I have experience with both AWS and Azure. I have used AWS for hosting and managing servers, databases, and storage. I have also used Azure for deploying and managing web applications and services. How do you implement caching in your applications? One approach is to use in-memory caching for frequently accessed data. Another approach is to use distributed caching systems like Redis or Memcached to improve application performance. Can you walk us through the deployment process for one of your projects? Sure. Typically, I start by building and testing the application locally. Then, I create a staging environment to test the application in a production-like setting. Finally, I deploy the application to the production environment using a deployment pipeline. Have you worked with any real-time web technologies like WebSockets or Socket.io? Yes, I have experience with both WebSockets and Socket.io. I have used WebSockets for building real-time chat applications and Socket.io for building real-time collaborative applications. How do you handle asynchronous programming in your applications? One approach is to use callbacks or promises to handle asynchronous tasks. Another approach is to use async or await syntax in modern JavaScript to write asynchronous code that looks synchronous. Can you explain the difference between MVC and MVVM architecture? MVC stands for Model View Controller, where the model represents the data, view represents the UI, and controller manages the flow. MVVM stands for Model View View Model where the view model is responsible for data binding between the view and the model. How do you ensure scalability in your applications? To ensure scalability, we can implement load balancing, caching, and database shodaying. We can also use cloud-based services like AWS or Azure to automatically scale up or down based on the traffic. Have you worked with any containerization technologies like Docker or Kubernetes? Yes, I have experience with Docker and Kubernetes. Docker allows us to package an application with its dependencies into a container, while Kubernetes helps manage and orchestrate multiple containers in a cluster. Can you explain the concept of microservices architecture and how it differs from monolithic architecture? In a monolithic architecture, the entire application is developed as a single unit, while in a microservices architecture, the application is broken down into smaller, independent services. Microservices allow for better scalability, fault isolation, and faster deployment times.